All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in sincerity and in truth, whether you're a prophet all the way down to a help. All right, the elect will be showing mighty works to please the Heavenly Father and glorify his name within the portions that they've been given. And we hope and pray that we're part of that number. All right, uh, we're here another day, okay, doing a lesson. Um, got the got the brothers, the priests from Houston, you know, the the, the elder brothers, Abadia, Yagodal, and then I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. And we're um, here fellowshipping, breaking bread, man, just having beautiful conversation. And uh, we wanted to touch up on this topic Touching up on holy conversation. And as much as we go into the holy conversation and talk about it, how much more does it need to be applied, especially since we see that our Lord is right around the corner? You know, you don't want to get to the point where you first come in the truth and you're on fire. And then the longer that you're here, you know, you get you lack on studying, lack on doing shows, lack on being charitable, coming around, whatever the case is. We want to make sure we magnify the Most High's name as much as possible. All right. And th and that's glorifying his name. And what better way to do that is to apply yourself as right. a sincere man in the truth and glorify him by preaching his word. You know, and again, preaching part goes to the preachers. But even according to whatever your lot is, if your lot is given, you know, focus on even getting <clears throat> better at that. And this applies for all of us. Kind of I was going to say, like, like you got one. It's, uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 43 and 30. It says, when ye glorify the Lord, mm -hmm. exalt him as much as ye can. For even yet will he far exceed. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary. For ye can never go far enough. Just land backing on the point you was making, man. When we do anything concerning and serving the Heavenly Father, we supposed to go all in, man. All right, especially now, like the point of we being that much closer to this place being wrapped up, man. And we see it through what? Through the standards that the Most High gave us uh, concerning the prophecies of the scriptures, man. That's right. Man, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Con, and um, I want to read this here in Second Peter, the third chapter. And the brother pointed out beautifully in that scripture in Sirach, man, like because it said he will far exceed even our expectations. Yeah. You know, so you think about it. If you handle your business in the spirit, obviously we're unprofitable servants. We can only go so far. But if you're handling your spiritual business, the Heavenly Father is going to blow our minds in a way that we can't even comprehend, man. It said he's going to even far exceed that. And this is the God of heaven and earth, man. So. How much really far can you imagine with him? Re receiving spiritual powers, man. That's right. Like you're saying, we can't comprehend right now because once we, we re uh, receive the spiritual powers and get out of this body, we're going to be on a whole different level mentally and, mm -hmm. and comprehend and have full understanding, man. That's right. All right. But that's why the scripture, he let us know. We know in part, therefore we prophesy in part, man. He gave us what we need for right now, but that don't mean, okay, you just sit back and only do a certain amount of work because you just hit the hit the uh, the minimum. No, man, you still put forth right. all you can right. while we're here. That's right. Con, you got a precept about it? Or? No, you got, you got it. Okay. Con, con. Well, shoot. Um, Really, I know I had this in Peter, but there was one I just thought about real quick in Baruch. Do I bring it out? Con, Baba Kashaw. It's in Baruch 4 and 28. It's Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. It says, for as for as it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh, so be returned. Seek him ten times more. Seek him ten times more. Glorify him ten times more. Okay, obviously you ain't going to be looking around the world for the most high. You find him in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. All right, you find him when you're sitting among great men. All right, what does Jeremiah 5 and 5 say? I will get ye unto great men and together they shall break the bonds. You know, this is seeking the Lord, man, because the Lord dwells. And every single last one of us It's written in John 14. It says, if any man love my father and love me, my father, and myself shall make our abode within him. So when you around the flame, as it says in Ecclesiastes, two is better than one. You seek in the most high. And then when you around like minded men, you're going to have that spiritual conversation, which is what we're going into. OK, that spiritual conversation is going to stir up. OK, the Lord's name is going to be glorified, especially if there's sincere 
diligent men that are sitting there wanting to glorify his name. And you got to think about it. Why would he not reward that? I mean, he doesn't have to, obviously, but he said that he would do it. All right. Again, the, the brother brought up the precept. It said he will far exceed that. You know, so you, it says, seek the Lord 10 times more. The scriptures also say, seek the Lord while he may be found. OK, and he's found within the scriptures. He's found with his knowledge. And we're in a period of time where that's getting ready to be closed up. Things are getting ready to happen right now. And if you teeter tottering, going back and forth, not really sincere, faking the funk, it's going to get weeded out, man. You know, it's going to get weeded out like the Zaquan brought it earlier. That's going to get weeded out. The fake is going is going to be exposed. And we pray constantly that the Lord keeps the spirit of sincerity on every last one of us, man. But if you ain't on fire, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of winging it. You know, that's going to come out, you know, and we don't want the Lord to take his Holy Spirit away from us, man. So that's why it's also important to fear, man. Yeah. But that Holy Spirit. You said what? No, I just said everything done in the dark going to come out. Gone, man. That that holy conversation is a necessity in these times, man. You got a precept? Yeah, I got a, I got a precept. Hey, what which y'all have? Uh, no, you got it. Okay, con. This this is uh Romans, the twelfth chapter, and I'm gonna start at uh verse nine. It says, "Let love be without dissimulation." And when you go into that dissimulation, is it's basically talking about uh being a hypocrite. You know, without being being a uh, being an actor, mm. you know, because love, what is love? Love is uh, action word. That's right. That's right. You know, yep. love, love is Second uh, John six. Okay, keep another keep another law to your to your brother. Mm -hmm. You know, it says um, so like yeah. All good. It says abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Mm. Yeah, and that starts with a mindset coming right. because we all came out of this evil world, right? Within that Gentile state of mind into into this uh, truth, right? And then it's a it's a constant battle. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, Paul expressed in uh, Romans the seventh That's chapter. Right. That's right. You know. So it says, um, "Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another." Meaning not being uh something we gotta be taught, you know, or learning this truth is not not to be selfish. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's it's really about the elect. It's about, you know, doing your how about stream your shy's business. It's not a you gotta have a selfless mentality. That's right, go ahead. You know? It says not slothful in business. Mm. And what's the what's the business? The business is the ministry mm -hmm. of what pushing out the true understanding of the, of the scriptures. Right, right. Okay, providing mm -hmm. service to the people, but to the uh, to the elect of of the nation of Israel. That's right. It says fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Mm. You see, so fervent in the spirit, yes, yeah, going into the to us teaching, yes, we're supposed to be pushing out out this word. You know, each brother as participants were, you know, employees of the most high workers, okay, contributing to the max, maxing out, uh, fulfilling our offices in the, in the ministry. That's right. You know, and it also goes into what you're doing when you're not around the ministry. Right. Absolutely. So that you know, if you you walk in the right way, that that energy is gonna pour over into the into the ministry. Absolutely. But if you walk in or, or with a with a sluggish, mm -hmm. you know, mentality, even in, when it comes to studying, how you just you know being being a uh, decent living a decent and orderly uh, lifestyle, you know. God. And it's more. I don't know if you brothers want to make uh, some uh, points, but yeah, it's a few more verses on here. God. It says, uh, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, mm. continuing instant in prayer. Hey, I'm so, so like it. Yes, sir. It says patient in tribulation. Mm. And that's even part of this, the thing of this ministry too, man. That's, that's part of doing the work. Because when you, the thing about it is, it even says it in Sirach, right, the second chapter. Yes, when yeah. one cometh to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for a temptation. And it says, flee not in the time of trouble. That's right. That's right. 
So that's part of the work within itself, you know? That's part of the job, having to endure tribulation. And it says being patient with tribulation. That word patience means to suffer. Right. So that's part of it, man, because that's one way that you're being made a man. Exactly. It's easy to, 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 to go into precepts. It's easy to go out into the highways. It's easy to be a man of the Lord when you ain't been touched yet. When you ain't been touched by Satan, mm -hmm. whether it's in your mind, whether it's in your flesh, whatever the case is, it's easy right. to be on fire. It's easy to yes. go hard. But yep. then the true test comes when that tribulation hits. All right. When you're being purged, that dross is getting purged out. Then your integrity is showing. Yep. Then your integrity is being tested. Am I going to continue to stay fervent? Am I going to continue to be a, a, a good example around the men that are around me? Or am I going to get weak? Because I'm dealing with something right. that I already knew was going to take place. You know? Yep. You got it, bro. Yeah, we all got uh, performance. We being judged on our performance from by the Most High. Absolutely. By Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh, Shai. You know, just like on the job. Mm -hmm. You know, you come up for review. They tell you how you doing in the company. And right. if you get getting a promotion oh, or yeah. not. You know? Mm -hmm. And what happens to the to the employee that, that's just, he's late. It's his, his uh, attendance to the business is yeah. he's always late. His morale is low. Right. Mm -hmm. He's all he he's slacking on the job. Yep. He's not meeting. Of you know, <laughs> you right. know. Tired of it. Right. Ready to find another job, man. <laughs> man, and it could be it could be because the tribulations is hitting you. Absolutely. Because the performance still gotta be met whether things Absolutely. are good or whether the was the thing you going through a turbulent time? Absolutely. That's how you, you know you earn that uh, that promotion or that raise when that tribulation or some say you're a machine operator on a job, and the same job what quota you have supposed to get done uh, when everything running smooth. If you having some complications, you gotta uh, fight through. Know how to uh, operate that machine mm -hmm. manually. Sometimes you That's gotta right. know how to work around certain stuff to still get the job to done get the job. and that build your repertoire. You know what? No matter what. That guy over there always put in work, no matter That's what. Right. He finds a way to get the job done, man. That's right. Gone. Did you have more on that about yeah, it? Yes, a couple of it's a it's a couple of more. It says distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Mm -hmm. That's another big paramount thing that you know we have to display in this truth is uh you know being hospitable, you know. And that and that take uh, action. Hospitable, you got to take care of your brother, and your brother is uh, coming into your into your house mm -hmm. to visit. You're not responsible for him. You know that's part of our uh, culture. And it says mm -hmm. dis distributing, having that mentality of giving, that giving spirit. You know, always you know always ready to look and and see who need help mm -hmm. in the in the in the ministry. Sometimes you may have extra monies, un uh, extra monies, and yeah, we have our responsibilities. But you know, we have times where the Most High, you know, blesses, and uh, you know, we have a little extra. Do you think about yourself, or do you think about giving to your brother first? Mm -hmm. Sometimes just caught up in you know living this day to day, you know, in this rat race uh, here in Babylon the Great. You know, you can lose, you can lose sight of that right you know what i'm saying you got to get get back on track right you know so uh one more one more verse it says bless well that's it that's good right there i'm gonna start right there okay i got a precept uh -huh. this is the book of proverbs let's see here let me get back to it Did you had a point it's more in there okay it is more in there kind, kind. Wanna, but uh it says it says uh bless bless them which persecute you Bless and curse not, and that's dealing with the amongst the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. That's dealing amongst swarmishes and different little issues that may, you know, happen amongst the brothers. Right. You know. That's right, man, and that's definitely important because we're going into co that conduct, especially in these latter days. If there's different grudges and stuff like that, like right. we're in a time mm -hmm. right now where yeah. that stuff needs to be needs to be hashed out and and we all got things that that be going on in our mind situations satan satan reigns supreme over this flesh and we are all still wrapped in this sinful flesh man you know so it's going to be a fight all the way into the end but what aids you 
in getting over these particular things, what aids us in getting over whatever is messing with us is the holy conversation, man, because that's driven by the spirit. It's driven by the spirit. It's a re it ain't called holy conversation for no reason. It's medication. It's separate it's, action. It's, yeah. it's separate action. Absolutely, bro. It's separate. And you go into like holy, kodash, what makes us separate from from the from the world? Our action, it mm -hmm. says holy actions. Absolutely. So what makes us separate, our actions separate mm -hmm. from all the other nations? That's right. Our uh, uh, The law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Okay, which is about uh, uh, is sacred. Mm -hmm. When you go into that word holy, it goes into sanctification. That's right. That's, That's right. what makes us when you go uh, apart. Our apartness mm -hmm. is sanctified. Right. It's cleansed from the from the filth. That's right. Us. That's right. It's an example of Yahweh Bashimi Havashai's energy on the planet yes. Earth. His will being done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Right. And having that holy conversation is introducing His will unto the world, pretty much. You know, Zion. Mm, Being that's the, right. We're supposed to be the monument, that's right. the memorial of Yahweh while mm -hmm. Yahweh shy on the planet Earth. That's right, brother. Man, beautiful you know? point. Gone. Was there more on that one? Uh, a few, a couple of more. Yeah, I was, I was gonna quick, stop, but really, I was gonna stop. That was a little too early. But okay. Ahead, I just wanted to make a quick point because you just spoke on uh, as far as what brother read about uh, enemies, man. As far as that's amongst the brotherhood, man, and. Just dealing with this topic, we are focused on finding mercy from the Heavenly Father right, right. through our actions, man. So if you don't put forth that same mercy you looking mm -hmm. to receive from the Heavenly Father, it's not going to go well with you, man. Right. And that's something we got to practice, man. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah, I was shy when you had... Well, I'll wait till brother finish and bring out this account. No, oh, okay. I'll finish okay. your scripture, bro. All right, it says, uh, rejoice. This is uh, Romans 5, 12 and 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that do, uh, I'm sorry, weep with them that weep. So we supposed to be in that mindset, you know, and that's a, that should be natural. Like the scripture talk about natural affection. Mm -hmm. You know, when brothers is, when we rejoice in fellowship and we, hey, brothers do too. Mm -hmm. We enjoy each other. Absolutely. But it, we also go through things in this flesh. You know what I'm saying? So we got to. You know, rejoice, and then they, when it's time to rejoice and weep, weep with your brother. You know, your brother may vent to you. It may be just a situation where you know a brother is vent. Uh, you need to be uh heard. Right. Just a brother may vent. You just let the brother vent. You know, what I'm saying right. and I'm right. with you, but I feel you right. Straight up, even you know? when Job, it's like I'm sorry. Nah, you got it, bro. Even when Job was going through what he went through, when he was telling his friends, right. he he mourned for seven days straight. They listened to him without saying, mm -hmm. you read it in Job, it literally says it. Exactly. They didn't say anything. Like, they just listened to him seven days straight, man. You know, which is spiritual right there, man. So just mm -hmm. just wanted to bring that point up to, to, to add to what you just said, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's good to just be that ear, man. You know, obviously, we know, you know, got to know how to monitor of how much you're venting about what you're going through, knowing that we all go through those different trials and tribulations, as it says in Corinthians. But at the same time, you don't just cut off your ear to a brother that's venting, especially if you know that that brother don't be venting about stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. So that means there's really something that's on his mind and he confided with you enough to be able to talk to you and tell you about that. Yeah, that you brother know? being able to vocalize what he's dealing with mm -hmm. and stuff and you just sit back and listen, he might get understanding out of the situation he's dealing with just by talking about it versus just having it locked in his head. Now you lending the ear and stuff. Right. It, it, it's just all through the spirit, man. Kind of. And we are supposed to be on levels, you know, get or get on a level to where, you know, we're able to apply balance to that. Because, you know, we don't want to be overwhelmed, right. you know, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. we want to be balanced in this thing. Gosh, you man. know, so if a brother is just doing too much weeping and too much venting, then that's a problem. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. su we're supposed to be on a level to Absolutely. regulate, you know, some of that. A lot of that we just internalize it and keep moving. Mm -hmm. Kid in this to to uh, make us stronger, mm -hmm. you know. That's right. All right. Uh, it says, "Be of the same mind one toward another." That's why brothers say so much. That's the spirit. Mm -hmm. Like brothers be on the same great frequency. Point. That's a great point, all the bro. time. You know. It says, "Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate." And I, I I sit back and observe sometimes. I watch brothers, you know, and I I see bro certain 
instances, brothers have to condescend and come down on the level of another brother, you know, mm-hmm. meaning, you know, when you're around, when you're around a, a particular brother or brothers, you know what I'm saying? You got to adapt to that brother. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because we all was given different portions of this faith and the, with, that, with that portion of faith come the gift. That's right. Like the most high sent a gift with the faith, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? That's right. It makes me think of what Paul said. I become all things to all men. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That ain't hey, the water, bro. No, no, Con, Con. He even said it earlier in that verse, too, going into well, loosely paraphrasing when you rejoiced, I rejoice. When you mourned, I mourn. Right. You know, however it was worded, but that's that's going down to that state, man. You know what I'm saying? That's being low. And every great leader, you know, like for example, there's different leaders. Like there was an account that I was reading in Samuel a few weeks ago. And this is an account when Absalom when Absalom was after, and those men were after his father, David. Right. And Absalom was receiving counsel from um, one of those men. I forgot his name. It wasn't the wicked one, but it was one that David actually sent to him privily. Okay. You know, and pretty much when he was uh, having a conversation with him, Absalom was ready to take them troops and, and, and go in and, and try to fight against David and such. You know, so when he received that counsel, you know, he pretty much told Absalom, look, man, something to think about. Your father's a man of war. Mm-hmm. They all in a state of bitterness right now, catching hell. And everybody that follows him, the particular word that it used was chaffed. He said all of his men are chaffed. And when you go into that word chaffed, that word chaff means bitterness. They was full of bitterness. Okay, and then there was something else that stood out. And this is the point that I want to get going into that low state being right. that leader. The other thing that he had mentioned after he said they was chaffed. And he was like, and you already know your father. He's probably in some pit in a lower position than his men are right now in the cave. And when it said that, it made me think of how David's conduct was. How he took the low. He brought himself low. You know what I'm saying? Being a leader. And we're all... We all want to be the, the future leaders of Israel, of the elect, man. You know, so the Lord got to put us through these situations. He has to put us through this tribulation, but also put us in situations where we got to become lower than the next man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just so we, it can be balanced. Mm-hmm. And when I say lower than the next man, I don't mean be overly humble, but bring yourself down to that level, man. And you earn more respect spiritually when you do that. Yep, that shows you know? a different level of understanding. Absolutely. Being able to adapt to where that brother is, where his faith is mm-hmm. at times, man. That's every, right. Every, every, every member is needed. That's and right. The scriptures even tell us in what's uh first Corinthians that the least that uh the least member is the is the most important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, the least member of the body is uh there's more honor bestowed. That's right. You know? That's right. So every member is 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 needed and is is important, mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely, man. Was there more on that one? Come on, this one. This I just want to finish off this verse. Okay. And it says, uh, "Be not wise in your own conceits." Mm-hmm. Right. So be that that goes in the, you know, not being all about yourself. Right. And then because of you know being overwise, you know, wise in your own conceit to where it's, you you didn't you going so far. To where now you going off, you know, right. you can go off with that. That's Being right. wise in your own conceit can cause you to go off, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, humble yourself. And we all have to do that. I mean, that's what we all have to do. That's what we're talking about. Holy conversation, it, it starts in the mind. This is a, a battle of the minds, mm-hmm. you know. That's right, bro. Beautiful, man. Uh, you said you was holding something too, right, y'all? Yeah, I'll bring it was quick one out. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes on Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 27. It says, A wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning he will beware of offense, but a fool will not observe time. And right mm-hmm. now, we're in that, this de- dealing with this holy conversation is what's separating the fools from wise men because you're seeing fools not paying attention to the times. They're not uh, uh, growing in the spirit, man, when you have the wise men who are constantly growing in the knowledge, man, and getting stronger, just dealing with, <clears throat> I'll say dealing with prophecy, man, we seeing these certain things happening and it's growing and it's building our faith up consistently, man. Mm-hmm. Every time we see another uh, stage in prophecy uh, get a um, uh, increase, all right? Every time we see anything come to pass concerning the prophecies and the words of this book, man, our faith grows, man. That's right. And with that, our actions grow with it, man. Absolutely. All right? To show the proof of your faith. That's right. Straight up. This is uh, 2 Peter, 
the third chapter. And um, I'm going to start at verse 9. And the point is in verse 11. But it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as, as some men count slackness. And that slackness can be involved in a particular pattern of actions that you might see in somebody. You remember the account that Yahweh Shai mentioned in Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 48th verse, going into that wicked servant that smitten his fellow servants. It said because he believed in his heart that the, it didn't say he said it openly, but he believed in his heart that the Lord wasn't going to come back at that time. So it said he began to, to, to um, pretty much loosely paraphrase. He began to smite his fellow servants mm -hmm. and ate and drank with the drunken, you know. So when you jump back to verse 9 in 2 Peter 3, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willingly that any should perish. And why did it say that? Because knowing that we're going to have to catch hell, bro. There's going to be certain afflictions that you catch in this truth. And it's not even for just us being the teachers and prophets, but also for you, y'all, that are listening in, tuning in, believing. Don't be surprised when you catch that strange hell. All right. It's even written in Peter. It says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is meant to try you. The Lord will have some strange stuff happen to you, man. Like an episode. I'm being funny, but um, I don't know if y'all watch the show Key and Pill, you know, and he had an episode called Consequences. You know, for those that might have saw it on here, y'all might giggle a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But it was some strange, bizarre things that was happening to him. And everybody thought he was lying <laughs> until afterward, the actual wrecking ball came and hit him, you know. But anyway, you know, I know y'all ain't seen it. You know, I would love to show you that clip after this so y'all see what I'm talking about. But anyway, going back to it, it'll be strange things that will happen to you. But it's pointed out here. It says not willingly that any should perish. You know, the thing about it is in this thing of ours, we're men and not only men, but we're soldiers, you know, we are soldiers in a time of war right now. So there's things that we're going to have to run into, things that we're going to have to go through to test us, to see if we're really worthy and if we really believe, man. And if you keep, if we keep our conversation upright, there's a reward that's coming for, especially if you keep that conversation upright in the time of trouble, you know, yeah. when you continue, it says, but that all should come to repentance. And that's talking about Israel, man. All right. You even read it in the beginning of first Peter. He directs it to the strangers that are scattered. Mm -hmm. So that all coming to repentance is talking about Israelites, man, because repentance means to turn back. It means to turn back and show sorrow to what you were doing before. Just like first Corinthians 12 says it, you know, at a point in time we were Gentiles. All right. We were carried away to these dumb idols, which we were led. OK, and then we re repented and turned back. OK, verse 10 says this. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Okay? Now, people, you know, I'm just saying this, if people, people was to hear Peter talking and go into that, they would have called him a hate, called it hate speech, say it's hate and all of that, because it's talking about destruction. But that's what the Lord is getting ready to come with, man. Soon. That's why it's important for us to stay, to keep our hands on that plow, man. And not count slackness as other men did as pertaining to what the previous verse has stated. It says the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Now, this is the key point of verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And when you go into that holy conversation in the Greek, that's pronounced hagnos and ostrophe. All right. And the brothers went into the, the, the definition and what being holy means to go into. And that means to be separated, to be sanctified, to be washed, to be cleaned. And then you have an astrophe, which literally goes not only into the things that you speak vocally, but the actions that follow those words. Holy conversation. All right. And before that, it says seeing these things must be dissolved. So this is exhortation, but putting the fear of the Lord behind that. Looking at the Lord's going to judge this place, what he's about to do, the fire that's about to come. That holy conversation is needed in order to be saved, man. So he, he threw that fear in there. All right. He threw that fear in there, man. That's why this holy conversation is important. Because you look at your relatives, your friends in the world, it's standing third. They are not delving into this and they look at you like you crazy for even being part of this, man. But they weren't blessed with this knowledge, man. They don't have the idea or the clue of what's getting ready to happen, man. We do. So that should move us with fear 
to continue to get our act right, especially since we're getting so close to the end. You know? Y'all got any precepts? Uh, so, I know you wanted something so Yeah, I was going to say I want to end it off on that because it yeah. literally goes hand in hand with what Peter has said right here. And it's in the book of Psalms, the 50th chapter. So lucky, y'all. Uh, give me the part. I'll read it for you once you get the verse. Okay. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 50, starting at verse 22. Because right. it's like he gave, Peter gave and Peter an exhortation with warning going into the fire and how the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And then he went on to the conversation part. So it's interesting how this mm -hmm. is, these two verses are worded right here. Because mm -hmm. it goes hand in hand with what we just read. Uh, I was that was a Psalm of David. Kind. <laughs> Psalm 50 and 22. It is, right? Uh, ASAP. Okay. Okay. Uh, Psalm 50 and 22, it says, Now consider this, ye that forget Yahweh, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. How And how is he going to tear people to pieces with the plagues that's getting ready to come? The judgments. And then it's going to top it off with the nuclear missiles that's about to hit, man. Mm-hmm. And he wants you to think upon these things. That's why in Sirach, the 18th chapter, the 24th verse, it says, think upon the wrath of the Lord before he turneth his face away. You know, in the previous verses before that, it says before judgment, examine thyself, man. All right. And how do you do that? Okay. You sit back, you meditate on things to work on, but also holy conversation. A part of, it, bro. A part of holy conversation can even be a brother telling you about yourself, something you need to work on. And you accepting it and growing from there, man. Because that's aiding your conduct, man. You being washed clean when a brother's telling mm -hmm. you some, some some filth he's seen on your shirt. You know? And that's being washed clean when you acknowledge it and you go further from that. You know? At least you be torn to pieces if you didn't know that. And mm -hmm. you would continue to live on and do what you was doing and be surprised by the mm -hmm. Lord. Right. You know? You got it, bro. Verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And what is the form of praise that we do? The lessons that we do, the fellowshipping that we do. Certain times you might get a reprimand for particular things. You going out on the highways and the hedges, all things that pertain to this ministry. Prayer. Prayer, the water, bro. That's tied with glorifying the heavenly father. And we just read it earlier in the book of Sirach going into doing it as much as possible. You know, you got it, bro. It says, and to him that ordered his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of the most high power. So if you order your conduct aright, especially here in these last days, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord, man. You ain't going to be touched by this wrath that's getting ready to come. Obviously, we know hell is coming, but we in a time of salvation. We are not in the time of Jake being destroyed. Well, when I say Jake, the elect, all right, we ain't, we ain't in the time of Jake being tormented and destroyed, man. Mm -hmm. Two thirds gonna be through. But we in the time right now where we gonna see Lord's willing with those men, Lord's yeah. willing with those individuals. We gonna see the most high salvation. This is the time that we in. That's why it says order your conversation all right, man. Right. We in the very beginning stages of we in the beginning stages of building up the nation. That's right. That's right. Straight up, bro. Man. The nation beautiful. is being built right now. Setting this precept. Mm -hmm. Right. Setting up the leadership That's to right. the nation. Man, straight up. And it's going to build from there. Man, the early stages of a business are always the hardest parts about building a business, man. You know, you got to toil. You got to sweat. You got to really catch hell. You don't see that fruit in a business until later on a lot of times, man. You don't see that fruit. But we're going to see that fruit in due time, man. If we continue to believe, we're going to see that fruit, man. And it's coming soon. Hey, it's written in 2 Timothy, the second chapter. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of his fruits. You're going to be the first one to eat of that apple if you plant that apple tree and you've been toiling hard to trim it, water it and such, you know. But if you ain't ordering your conversation right, you ain't going to taste of it, man, because it's not in your mind anyway. You know, but if it's in your mind and you longing for it and you working for it, you're going to receive it, man. And that's guaranteed. Wait, one more scripture. Come on, we can end it off on that. Uh, it's Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, mm -hmm. for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Mm. I got it, bro. Oh, man, that's that right there is self-explanatory, man. You know, we're going to reap if we faint not. Heavy hitter precept right there, yeah. man. You know, but if you faint, 
you ain't going to reap it. You're going to be in the kingdom, but you ain't going to be the first fruits. You ain't going to be able to have the, the supreme, the creme de la creme, all right, of the dainties of the kingdom that the heavenly father promised to those that did not faint. You know, the heavenly father, he's long suffering. We have to be long suffering, man. And that's just what that is. And as much as it hurts a lot of times, as much as it sucks, it's necessary, man. It's necessary for your salvation when you go through these particular things. You know, the apostles um, mentioned this a few times, and it's something that stuck like glue. You know, they said Elder Yaiqua made a statement going into, you know, when that when that fruit was given unto us, when that knowledge was given unto us, it said the, ser the serpent wasn't lying when he said you shall know good and evil. Mm -hmm. Now he he was deceptive on how he offered it, mm -hmm. okay? Because he didn't know that we were gonna have to go through all of this and catch this hell. But that right there was a hidden gem on our glorification. Because now we have to be in the process mm -hmm. of knowing good and evil. In order to be a god, you gotta know good and evil. And we've been filled with a lot of evil being on this side to yeah. really appreciate the good that's yeah. getting ready to come where I'm getting at. We have, we have to get exposed to the to the uh, the, the pinnacle of wickedness right. right? to be the proper uh, judges on this planet Earth. That's right, bro. Beautiful, yep. man. And that time is coming soon, so don't faint. Do not faint. Endure, man. Endure hardness as a good soldier in the Mashiach as is written. Any of y'all got any closing points or anything? Gone, gone. And we can end it off on that. Lord's willing, it was edifying. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, Great Millstone. Peace and blessing to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.